I turn around, and when I turn around, the diddle cam people see my bad side. So I can't turn around and look at the news until the diddle cam's off. So we'll do that now. Welcome back, folks. Joe Rushball, Open Line Friday. The New York Times is saying that Trump has told aides that he's decided to remove Bannon. I haven't yet found anything that says Bannon is out. Have you? Have you seen something that says Bannon is out? Bannon out at White House is the drudge headline, but if you go to the New York Times story, the story is that Trump has told people he's decided to get rid of Bannon. But when? After Christmas? Before Thanksgiving? So you want to make sure Bannon gets his Thanksgiving turkey before he lets him go? When? So I'm waiting, my friends. I'm waiting. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, when, when the story is Trump is tell, telling people he's going to get rid of Bannon, it's not the same as Bannon being told he's gotten rid of. Anyway, let me grab a call. I didn't do enough calls yesterday. I, you know how many calls we took yesterday? Three. Three phone calls. I'm overpaying a lot of people <laughs> to be here. I'm just kidding. I'm just, that's just unfair to the callers. I'm inviting them to call in here. So let me grab one. Don in Angels Camp, California. I'm glad you called, sir. You're up first today. How are you doing? Doing good, Rush. Uh, Long time listener. Uh, I agree with most of everything you're saying except for one part. I don't think the, uh, Republicans are doing it by mistake. I don't think they're bringing dupes. I think they actually side with the Democrats, and they're right there along with big government and everything. And you are you're, you're reacting to my saying that Republicans are unwittingly joining this movement. Is that what you're reacting? Yeah. Yeah, I I knew when I said that the moment that I said it, I, I knew there were going to people be people who disagreed with me. what I, what I meant by it. Was and I, I do think there are some some Republicans are stupid that are not I, conniving and calculating and, and they're really stupid. They really they really have, they get suckered by all of I'm, this uh, flowery thinking, language and they think it's just safer to join. W- once a mob forms against anybody, it's just safer to join the mob than to stand up and defend whoever's under assault. Now I, I agree with this. A lot of Republicans are big government guys. They're establishment types. They hate Trump. They don't want Trump to succeed. I myself have said so. So I know exactly you're where you're coming from. I just, I, I just don't think they're all that way. I think some of them are, are just gutless. You know, they just, they're just following the crowd here. I don't think so, Rush. I think they're doing it on purpose. Well, okay. They're not stupid. Well, I'm not talking about a majority of them. Uh, but uh, I don't dis- I don't dispute the idea that there are a lot of Republicans that wish Trump had not won and wish he wasn't there and are willing. There were, they said even during the campaign, I forget which Republican it was that said this. It might have been Kasich. I forget who. But like, yeah, I'd be willing to lose power for a generation if it meant keeping Trump out of the White House. And I don't think that sentiment has changed much uh, among quite a few of them. They're doing everything they can to, to stop his agenda. They're not doing a single thing to advance it, or very little. Thanks for the call. Have to take a break. Out of time. Uh, look, folks, I wouldn't be surprised. Just, just so you... I, I don't want you to think that I'm off the reservation. I wouldn't be surprised if the RNC itself is now counting impeachment votes among Republicans. I'm not predicting it. I'm just telling you, if I were to learn that, I don't know if I'd be surprised. They're all scared to death. The media. I mean, for crying out loud, what's so hard about this? What I want to know is, how does Trump think he could get rid of Bannon? I mean, wasn't Bannon running everything? Wasn't Bannon the guy that got Trump elected? Wasn't Bannon the guy writing his speeches? Wasn't Bannon the guy doing all the strategy? My question is, why hadn't Bannon gotten rid of Trump before now? Live from the Southern Command in sunny South... Three Bob. So I guess Bannon's not going to be able to hang around long enough to get the Thanksgiving or Christmas turkey. Looks like it's, it's, it's out. Great to have you here. Open line Friday. Rush Limbaugh behind the golden EIB microphone. You know what's going to happen now? I'll make.
make a little prediction. Up until about 20 minutes ago, one of the most reviled, hated, despised people in Washington was Steve Bannon. Before the end of the day, he is going to be one of the most revered, respected, lionized members. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to say that Bannon realized this whole thing's up. It's over, and he wanted to go out, but he didn't want to resign because they'd call him a quitter. So he goes and gives that interview with that that American prospect, this left-wing rag, and undercuts Trump on North Korea and undercuts Trump. And Trump fired him. That's the only Bannon wanted out of there. It was so bad in there that not even a guy sympathetic to the alt-right can put up with the kind of insanity going on in the White House. Then they're going to be seeking out Bannon for interviews. He's going to get book deals. He's going to get movie deals. He's going to get TV show deals. Tell us the truth of what went on in there. Tell us how you had to tell Trump what time it was every day. What time did you go to the residence and get Trump out of bed to make sure he was at the Oval Office on time? This kind of stuff. You doubt me? This is exactly what's going to They're going to try. There'll be some people that will try this. But the point is, Bannon's going to become revered and respected because Trump fired him. And if Trump fired him, it must mean that Bannon had seen the light and just could not continue. Had to get thrown out. Couldn't quit. That's not good. You don't want to look like a quitter. Grab uh, grab audio soundbite number 18. This is Robert Kuttner. Robert Kuttner is a dyed-in-the-wool leftist. And he runs a publication called The American Prospect. And he called, Bannon called this guy recently and gave an interview. And it was in this interview that Bannon essentially threw Trump's North Korea policy under the bus and indicated um, in a number of other ways that Bannon was running the show, not Trump. On China, uh, Bannon said, yeah, we love all this hysteria on the left. We love them being sidetracked. We love them focusing on the monuments and stuff because the real war that we're facing is with China, so forth. And everybody was at, why, 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 why do this? Did Bannon think it was off the record? No, we didn't think it was off the record. He did it on purpose. So last night, the, the, the News Hour, formerly with Jim Lara, and now with uh, Judy Woodruff, who was not there either. John Yang, I guess, was the correspondent. They, they sent this guy to talk to Kuttner to ask him, why did Bannon call you? What really went on in that conversation? The question is, he talked about what he called ethno-nationalism. He called these right-wing protesters, called a bunch of losers, a fringe element. I think the media plays it up too much. We, we've got to help crush it, help crush it more. These guys are a collection of clowns. He was talking about the the Nazis and the white supremacists. And this guy's asking, Kuttner, what did you think when Bannon said that to you? That was completely disingenuous because, of course, he, as much as anybody else in America, is responsible for assembling this collection of clowns as a political force. And if he's trying to ingratiate himself with somebody who's a editor of a liberal magazine, The American Prospect... He's going to say what he needs to say to try and persuade me that he's not such a bad guy. But you have to take that with a ton of salt. And I think it's the usual dog whistle stuff where the alt-right is not going to think that uh, Steve Bannon somehow has had a deathbed conversion and he now thinks they're bad guys. Okay, let, let's break this down because this statement by Kuttner indicates something that is widely believed Inside the Beltway, the Washington establishment, conventional wisdom, it holds that there wouldn't be Trump. Aha. Bannon says he has resigned from Trump's White House. What website is this? Circuit.com. That's Sinclair Media. So Bannon says he's resigned. Trump is telling people, no, 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 no. I am, I am going to get rid of him. So the first, the first argument has already erupted. Bannon disputing that he's gotten fired. Is that your point? Let me this. Oh, he said he resigned two weeks ago. 
This story says Banner is like, hang on just a second here. Well, it's not marked up. Do I have to read this whole page to find that? Oh, it's a tweet. Sarah A. Carter. Bannon just told me he resigned from the White House two weeks ago. I wonder if Trump knew. Well, because Trump just today told people he's getting rid of Bannon. Bannon says he resigned two weeks ago. Bannon called this guy Kuttner this week or over the weekend. No, Tuesday of this week. So Bannon called the American prospect after he'd resigned, talking about his policy in China, his policy in North Korea. Well, anyway, let me break down this country because I need to tell you, if, if you want to follow this, you need to know the foundational base that's going to uh, tinge all the reporting on this. As exactly what this guy said is what they all think in the media and in the Washington establishment. They think that the Nazis... And the white supremacists and the Klan are Trump's base, that that's who elected Trump and that Bannon assembled it via Breitbart's website. That's what they think happened, folks. You may think that sounds idiot, but they believe that. And Bannon, of course, has encouraged it. I mean, that's quite a powerful thing to be able to do, to organize about 500 people and have them become a base electorate of a president of the United States. But <laughs> um, they believe this. You know, this is this. I must admit, this has stymied me from the first time I heard this, because the effort here has been to say that Trump's had nothing to do with the people who voted for him. This this. This narrative portrays Trump as as uh, a puppet, essentially, and that this magazine guy and website guy came along and somehow found a group of populists and nationalists to love and support Trump. And they all happen to be Nazis and white supremacists and members of the Klan. Now, you can you can think I'm misjudging this all you want, but please do not doubt me. That is what they think. Just judge it with other things you know they think that are outrageously wrong and just add this to it. And Kuttner admits it here in this bite because Bannon says to Kuttner in the interview, well, these guys are a bunch of clowns, meaning the supremacists and the Nazis and the Klan. He called them losers, a fringe element that the media plays up too much. They're trying to crush a collection of clowns, and Kuttner doesn't believe that Bannon's telling him the truth. He says it was completely disingenuous because, of course, he, Bannon, as much as anybody, is responsible for assembling this collection of clowns as a political force. The left lives and breathes under so many lies, they accept so they tell themselves lies that become conventional wisdom. And folks, I'm really, I know I'm saying this for the third time, and I, I guess I do it because I want to make sure you get this. They don't believe anybody with a brain would have voted for Donald Trump. There has to be some other explanation. And the explanation is Steve Bannon and Breitbart. That Bannon is a Svengali, and he's gone out, and he found this collection of fringe elements in the Klan, in the white supremacist movement, and uh, the neo-Nazis, and built a website to appeal to them, and then started selling Donald Trump to them, and they bought it. And in this story, what the people inside the Beltway have, have concluded is that Trump had very little to do with assembling the people that voted for him. It's one of the ways they marginalize Trump. It's one of the ways the insiders tell them that Trump is really not a threat to them. That he really didn't do this. This behind-the-scenes troll guy, this Bannon guy did it. And they really believe it. Now, as such... Trump has a golden opportunity to smoke these people if he'll just do it, because they are continuing to underestimate him, even in the midst of all this. 
They are continuing to under Donald Trump could own these people if he would focus. And I'll tell you how he focuses. I'll tell you right now what he has to do to focus. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll assume the role of unpaid strategist here for five minutes. It's very simple, Mr. President. You become the United States president of the economy. You become the president of tax cuts. You become the president of jobs. You become president of economic policy. And leave this social stuff to Ivanka. Or whoever, I'm just, you focus on why you were elected. You become the president of the wall, the president of borders. You become the president of tax cuts and tax reform. And you laser focus on the economy and you laser focus on getting the GDP up to three to five percent. And you do that, Mr. President, and they can nip at your heels like a bunch of chihuahuas all day long and it ain't going to matter. But Trump, I know, when these things happen like Charlotte, Trump knows the truth. He knows where the real power is. He knows these people that are being blamed didn't do anything. The the, the real power is the rioters on the left. Trump knows this. And let me find some. Let me find some. I I was reading um, National Review last night as, as just part of the show prep routine that I go through. And Rich Lowry posted... Something at the corner, which is their uh, their their ongoing blog, and it was his characterization of Trump's press conference on Tuesday, where he doubled down on the uh, the protesters and took back the notion that it was white supremacists and all this that were the problem. And I'm having trouble finding this is a I don't know of a fix for this. I know I've got something somewhere in this. Here it is. Here it is. Rich Lowry, the Breitbart presidency. Now, this Rich, you know, he's a, he's conservative. He's the editor of National Review. And and but as such, there is a there is an establishment. Uh, what should I say? Establishment. Uh, overlap. Okay, Fox is now saying today is Bannon's last day. Sarah Huckabee issued a statement. White House Chief of Staff Kelly and Bannon mutually agreed today would be his last day. So Bannon didn't resign two weeks ago. Oh, he could have still resigned two weeks ago and then agreed today is the last day. And Trump's out there not knowing that, telling people that he's going to get rid of Bannon. Is that what we're to believe? Anyway... Here, I just I just want to tell you, I'm trying to tell you how they think in there and why I think if Trump just becomes president of the economy, you know what I mean by that? I'm not trying to be funny with that. Why are you laughing at this? Oh, you're laughing at Trump. Didn't know. It's a joke that Trump didn't know. You think I'm being serious with this? I'm making fun of the media reporting here. I'm making fun of the media, not Trump. Anyway. Listen to these two paragraphs from Rich Lowry. Over the past few days, this is a, this is a comment on Trump's last press conference that the media just beside itself thinks it's the worst thing they've ever seen. Oh, my God, he needs to be impeached. There's even a state senator in Missouri that's calling for his assassination. My state has a state senator calling for Trump's assassination it's because of this press conference. So Rich writes... Over the past few days, Trump hasn't spoken as the leader of the country or even the leader of one party. Instead, he's speaking as a leader of an inflamed faction. This is why it was almost unthinkable that he would give a unifying talk, as any other president would, at the funeral of Heather Heyer, the young woman slain in the vehicular attack by an alt-right protester. Trump's Sensibility is highly unusual for a politician, let alone for the leader of the free world, but very familiar from the Internet or social media. As his news conference showed, Trump's level of argument is at the level of a good Breitbart blogger 
He would absolutely kill it in the comments section of a right-wing website or trolling a journalist. Now, how would you interpret that? That is Rich Lowry writing about Trump's press conference, where Trump went out and was calling CNN reporters fake news, and he was characterizing...